and welcome back to the latest anime and manga news for the week ending August 16th, 2019, starting with uh, a perhaps not surprising news story. The 11th Kyoto Animation Awards um, have been suspended. I get, think you can guess why, given the state of the studio at this point. They're accepting no new submissions, and they will be not taking any questions about the, uh, the Kyoto Awards for the time being. Uh, basically not looking to see anything more going on there. Um, so that is just kind of, you know, unfortunate, but again, I, I don't think they need to, uh, to push very hard on the Animation Awards. Uh, basically, they've been doing this annually to look for new stories, new sort of talent, new things, um, and it sort of um, get people to submit stories that uh, Kyoto Animation then publishes. And um, the idea was to more or less crowdsource ideas for stories that might eventually make it into Kyoto Animation um, productions, although we haven't had many of those coming out of there. But that is that's kind of the reality of that. Um, but yeah, so no 11th Kyoto Animation Award, no uh, Kyoto Animation Awards for this year. But again, kind of makes sense. Uh, moving on, the Taiwanese One Piece Manga Mura story continues to unfold. We talked a little bit about this a couple of weeks ago, I believe. There were several arrests um, of some Japanese folks living in Taiwan who um, were arrested over uploading... One Piece to Mangamuro, which, which was one of the big manga pirate sites in Japan. We're talking, you know, huge amounts of traffic, huge amounts of potential revenue coming through there. Apparently, a man named Wataro Adachi uh, contacted police and said he wanted to turn himself in, um, flew from Taiwan to Japan, whereupon he was indeed arrested at the airport. Um, he's not admitted, or he's, not, he's neither admitted um, nor denied the allegations but is currently planning to speak to a lawyer. Um, and so uh, we're going to see what effect that has. The Japanese publishers are seeking to uh, essentially extend Japanese law around uh, arresting people and, and essentially blocking access to pirate sites. Right now, you can really get away with a lot of piracy. There's not a lot of um, um, regulation around that. And the publishers are asking the police to go after these really, really big pirate sites. So um, this is just another, another chapter in that book. And uh, I will report back more as we hear more about it. But more arrests being made around Magamura. Uh, moving on to some anime film news. Pro Mare, the latest anime film from Studio Trigger, released recently. Um, it came out, let's see here... Um, uh, opened in theaters May 24th, uh, and has been in theaters for a while, um, and it has now earned more than 1 billion yen. Granted, that's uh, about $9.4 million U.S. The staff is preparing some kind of thank you plan for fans. Opened in 200 theaters back in May 24th, ranking at number 8 in its opening weekend. Um, and so it is, um, you know, continuing to apparently, you know, progress, which is rather nice. G-Kids does plan to screen the film in North America, in September, so you'll hopefully get a chance to watch it. Obviously, it looks rather sort of um, Gurren Lagann esque and very Trigger esque. So we'll see where that goes, and uh, we're hoping to uh, to to have some some fun stuff there. Uh, it was already hosted at Anime Expo, also screened at Otakon in July. So cool stuff there. Promari certainly chugging along in terms of success. Everyone likes successful anime film. Um, the One Piece Stampede film, also doing surprisingly well. Um, it had the largest first day attendance record in Japan so far in 2019. So more folks showed up for the first day of One Piece Stampede than for any other Japanese film so far in Japan, which is pretty good. That's 356,052 people. Not that many. About 350,000 people. But uh, film attendance is pretty low in Japan in general. Folks just don't seem to show up for... For those, which is quite strange. Um, this is the 20th anniversary film for One Piece. You can imagine that. Yep, it's been around for 20 years now. Um, but very cool that people are turning out in droves to see One Piece more even than a lot of Japanese films. Kind of amazing. 
Um, also, some anime film news, uh, news. The Black Fox anime film will be, will be premiering at the Crunchyroll Expo. This shouldn't be a huge surprise considering that Crunchyroll partly financed the film. Black Fox is made by, um, one second, a Studio 3 Hertz. Studio 3 HZ, so I assume that's 3 Hertz. Uh, this is planning to be a theatrical a uh, anime film, but Crunchyroll um, has the exclu exclusive ability to st uh, premiere that at Crunchyroll Expo, which is coming up um, just in a couple of weeks. It is being directed by Kazuya Nomura, a Robotics Notes, Joker Game, and Ghost in the Shell, the new movie. Uh, he's sort of the chief director of it there. Uh, Studio 3 Hertz also worked on Princess, Prin Princess Principal and Flip Flappers, as well as Gun Gale Online. So, uh, pretty darn cool, and the, uh, the director director, as opposed to the chief director, is uh, Keisuke Shinohara, who is episode director on Little Witch Academia, Devil Man, Crybaby, and Kiz Neighbor, among others. So, cool there, more anime stuff coming out, hoping that turns out cool, and that's a really cool cover as well. Uh, moving on to some Comic Hat news. Uh, Comic Hat is continuing to be an absurdly huge festival, 170,000 attendees on Sunday alone, that was on August 10th, uh, this is up from 160,000 the previous year on Sunday, so numbers still increasing at comic Ed, which is a good thing. Um, let's see here, um, just double checking, did they say, uh, the first day saw about 160,000 attendees, so uptick on, on, on Sunday, and good news. Comic Head is still popular and still pulling in the fans and still pulling in the folks who are who love collecting doujinshi. Perhaps not a surprise, but a, but good, good uh, nevertheless. Not so good the fact that three attendees of Comic Head suffered heat stroke. Nothing you know, nothing life threatening that that has been reported, but um, multiple people suffering from heat stroke on Sunday, which was the third day of Comic Head. Um, so yeah, that that is that is definitely a problem. Um, indeed, the official website posted a, an advisory on guarding against heat stroke for attendees of the for the for the uh, fourth day of Comic Head, basically saying, "Hey guys, watch out, be careful, guys and gals." Um, they're also restricting um, access to the for, for those who don't have wristbands, all that kind of stuff, making sure that the right number of people are there so they don't overwhelm things. There are some reports of a mismanaged lines that kept people out in the sun for a longer than usual on Sunday, which uh, certainly did not help. Um, some atten attendees um, reportedly had to spend hours on standby in the venue's parking lot. You can imagine how hot that gets, so that's, oof, no good, no fun. Um, so hopefully that will not be a uh, big deal. But also speaking of Comic Cat, last news of the day, the O, I'm sorry, the IOEA, which is the parent organization um, that kind of runs Comic Cat, um, or doesn't really run Comic Cat, but it's, it's kind of the the umbrella organization on top of Comic Cat as well as Otakon and, and some other events. Um, they've announced that they're um, going to host an Otaku Summit 2020 in June of next year as an official Tokyo Olympics event. So this will be basically a convention happening in Japan in conjunction with the Tokyo Olympics. That's pretty darn cool. Um, it's described as a place for international exchange through the otaku culture where people from around the world who love otaku culture and world event organizations can gather. I was actually at a panel put on by this organization back at Otakon, um, and they talked about one of their big things is that they provide sort of spaces and places for people to gather, um, but they're not, you know, they, they, they do that so they don't have to like police who is there and why they're there and so forth and so on. So it, it allows those events to kind of um, be whatever they are without um, getting a lot of uh, uh, restrictions on on those those things. So um, hopefully that will be um, a successful event. It'll be at Ikebukuro at Sunshine City and the Toshima Residence Center on June 27th and 28th, 2020. So if you think of going for the Olympics or even not, this might be a reason to go to Japan. So pretty darn cool that that is a thing that will be happening. Anime and the Olympics together.